Hey, thanks for downloading this special bonus episode of the podcast. I just wanted to give you a heads up ahead of time that the audio quality is a little different. I used a different method to record, and I didn't adjust the levels properly. So hopefully it's not too much of a distraction for you. Um, otherwise, uh, thank you for listening, and Merry Christmas! This is Matt Hurt at Obsessive Viewer on Twitter with a bonus episode of the Obsessive Viewer podcast presented by ObsessiveViewer.com. I got those backwards. It's supposed to be obsessiveviewer.com's whatever. Oh, no. I know. I know. Uh, welcome to the Obsessive Viewer. We're a weekly movie and TV podcast that covers a specific topic, be it genre, trope, movie, or show each episode. You can find back episodes at ovpodcast.com, find the blog at obsessiveviewer.com, and subscribe to the subreddit at r slash obsessiveviewer. Also, you can become a Patreon subscriber donator person at patreon.com slash obsessiveviewer. And uh, this, is a, this is a... An abnormal episode because this is uh, a bonus episode. We're talking about the basically the movie trailers that have come out recently. Kind of something to kind of uh, break up the monotony of the releases of this of the podcast so far because we've been talking a lot about Star Wars and I kind of want to give something for the people that don't like Star Wars or don't aren't interested in it. So I brought along for this episode one of the biggest Star Wars fans I know, <laughs> Robert Feck, is frequent guest and uh, and you know friend of the show, friend of the host, all that. How's it going? Good. Thank you for having me back. Yeah, no problem. So we're here to talk about Star Wars. I see. Well, well yeah. Um, <laughs> to be honest, I just accepted this invitation to get close to you so I could shank you over what you said about Star Wars in the last couple of episodes. I, you, know, you know what's funny, actually, is that I uh, today I, <laughs> I, uh, ch- I changed the titles of the episodes. I added subtitles to them just because I had this idea. So, like, the part one of that episode is... This is part four? No, no. I should have, though. <laughs> um, but, no, the first episode is now uh, Star Wars Saga, part one, the dark side. <laughs> and then the second one is the light side. So, I basically, I George lucas our podcast episodes by altering them. Pray that I don't alter them further. Uh, see what I did there? Because yeah, Star Wars. I'm, I like good, yeah. good work. Good right? work. So yeah, but we're not here to talk about Star Wars. Uh, our, I'm not sure when this episode will be released. Probably before our Star Wars of Force Awakens episode. So uh, we'll have that um, in the near future. But uh, there have been a ton of trailers. ton of trailers. And... Yeah, well, I was just thinking that we would uh, go through each one and talk about them. How do you feel about that? That's a great idea. I uh, am pretty anti the way the trailers have been coming out lately. Really? I am. Like in terms of content or volume? No, or? Vo- well, volume. I, here's the thing. I, I love going to the movies, obviously, and the trailers are one of my favorite parts of the movies. Mm-hmm. And I love seeing the trailers for the first time on the big screen. And, you know, t- take a movie like Star Wars. They- they've announced, you know, weeks in advance the, the trailers that we're going to show in front of Star Wars. Mm-hmm. We-, we knew we were going to get X-Men. We we knew we were going to get Star Trek. We knew we were going to get uh, Batman. Right. And instead of letting us view these for the first time in a uh, theater setting, they release them online. Yeah. Which, all right, cool. I watched them the second they were online, but... I really miss seeing the first trail, like seeing a trailer for the first time on the big screen. So it, mm-hmm. it, it takes the magic away from me when I do finally see it on the big screen. I agree completely. Actually, it's and it's gotten to the point where it's it's just ridiculous that they they'll release a trailer, they'll they'll release a teaser for a trailer, and then release the trailer, and then yeah, release that, the trailer in theaters. That it's, teaser for the trailer is the most asinine thing. It's it like, is Here, the worst. Here's five seconds of something we're going to release tomorrow. Oh, right. Okay. Thanks. Ugh. Good. It's it's really annoying. Really annoying. And I, I feel like the last two weeks, studios have—I don't even know that they're playing. They're like, "Oh crap!" They're just—we just had one of our big summer competitions throw out a trailer. Yeah, quick, get a trailer out there. Exactly. It's just been a dumping ground. Oh my god! I'm gonna take that again. <laughs> <laughs> just keep that in there. <laughs> yeah, I probably will. Um, but yeah, it's it's it really has just been a dumping ground of just trailer after trailer after trailer. And I mean. For the most part, they're well produced trailers. Th- they are. There are some bad ones, and we'll, I'll, you know, I'll, we'll get into obviously uh, the ones right. that we don't really care for. Mm-hmm. And there's been some backlash too, especially from people that are in the films. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm I'm excited to talk about that one. Um, yeah, and I mean, I understand it's marketing. They they need to market their movies. And sure. 
and all that. But but they, they these trailers, they know they're going to get traction in the theaters, mm. too. So release them in the theaters and then release them online. Yeah. I don't oh, see yeah. how that can change the dynamic of the mm. advertising. I would love if there was a – like. Like an online, an online exclusive one, and then a theatrical exclusive trailer. Like they recut it. Tra- like have have like have like half the trailer online. Have that be the official release of it, and then have a full length trailer for for in the theater. I'd be cool with that. I, right? I think that at least I would give something special for the people that you know waited for to see the trailer. Because you yeah. know, I, take back you know go back to. Uh, you know the the force or the the original prequels, the mm-hmm. original prequels um, <laughs> the, of Star Wars, and I hate to bring it back to Star Wars, but this mm-hmm. this is a good example. Me, yeah. my uh, me, and my brother uh, are big movie fans, always have been, and so when they announced that they were going to release the trailer for Revenge of the Sith in front of the Incredibles movie, mm-hmm. we made it a point. Like I knew nothing about the Incredibles, we made it a point to go see the Incredibles just to see that trailer. Now. Incredibles was an amazing movie. It's mm-hmm. one of my favorite Disney movies of all time now. But the point is, you know, I went to the movie specifically to see that trailer and I missed that. And they, there was even cases I remember reading online where people went to the Incredibles, saw the Star Wars trailer and then left. That's basically how I was for the Star Trek Beyond trailer this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> No, but yeah, totally. I I I absolutely remember uh that kind of response being to that and that's something that we've lost as movie fans with the right. rise of social media and the internet. Um we and, need to take it down. trailers really. too, you know, they yeah. you know, someone leaked the Batman v Superman the first one, not the one. Right. And someone leaked that over Comic-Con Back and, when it looked good. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk we'll about talk it about later. <laughs> But yeah, I, I miss that. I miss that dynamic with the trailers, and it's just I love the internet. Everyone loves the internet, mm-hmm. but it's it's kind of ruined movie trailers for me. It really has, and, and it's it, like you said, like like the theatrical experience of seeing movie trailers in in the theater is that's um, people gripe about oh they have too many trailers before movies, but that's like it's kind of just a. Uh, it's it's such a such a special part of the movie going right. experience, and it's one of my favorite parts too. And it's there's never enough know. trailers for me. Like I'm yeah. I'm always what, well, and it's stupid because like oh man, the movie's starting. I I always right. want more trailers. I <laughs> right, um. Yeah, yeah. Although with the Force Awakens, there was a ton of trailers. I didn't think there was abnormally uh, an, an abnormal amount of trailers. Really, I really did. Interesting. Yeah, I just. Huh. I don't know. Uh, maybe I, just because I just love trailers so much. Right, yeah. I will say this. God, they could have used that as a great time to release Rogue One. Oh, that would have been... Just a teaser trailer. Oh, yeah. Because if you think, they, they released the Force Awakens first teaser trailer like last November. So, yeah, well, absolutely. You know, before, over a year before the release of the film. So I have to imagine they got some footage. Yeah, they have to. I'm sure that they locked down. I think they were finished filming, aren't they? Uh, if they're not, they're close. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so they have to have some finished product. Yeah. So I, I c- it would have been great. I can't imagine why they wouldn't want to, uh, wouldn't want to promote a prequel to Star Wars. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, but no, uh, yeah, I, I was really hoping that we would get something Mesa like no that. understand. <laughs> Anyway, um, <laughs> so let's go ahead and start going through all these trailers and everything. Um, the first one that I have on the list, I'm, I have these in, let me check to make sure I actually have these in the right, yeah, these are in order of their release day. These are all 2016 movies, of course. Uh, the first one that I have is Zoolander 2, which comes out February 12th. Um, I have heard good things about Zoolander. I've never seen it. Um, I, I think I, I started watching it one night, like uh, probably like, 10 or 11 months ago um because it just reached netflix and and i was kind of in a mood to just watch something kind of low-key and kind of you know comedic but i got like maybe 10 minutes in and i was like i I might as well just go to sleep instead um (laughs) and i never went back to it in my opinion that was probably the wiser decision and that was very interesting to hear you say that before we were recording because i've heard really good things about it i have friends who who tell me that i should see it and i will see it eventually before um the second one, but what do you think about Zoolander and about the Zoolander two trailer? I I realize that I'm a minority in this area with Zoolander, but I just I hated the movie. Like really, there I guess there were a couple funny parts, but I just I couldn't I couldn't get into it. I just thought it was just way too stupid for stupid sake. And, and mm. Had a couple funny parts, like the the whole. Uh, <laughs> The school for ants. That's a <laughs> classic. And, 
there's a scene with David Duchovny that was kind of funny, but yeah. other than that, I just I couldn't get past how stupid it was for me. And I, I, nothing against anyone that's in it because you know I like Ben Stiller, I like mm-hmm. Owen Wilson, I, I love Will Ferrell. I no, I, I just I despise that movie, and wow. so, so much so that uh, an ex girlfriend actually bought me the movie as a joke because <laughs> I, I was complaining one day that I didn't have a Z <laughs> movie in my uh, catalog. And she's she's like, oh, I'll go get you a Z movie. And she brought back Zoolander, and <laughs> she's an ex girlfriend. Right, right. So, <laughs> so when they released Zoolander two trailer, I not really excited for it, but I watched it, and it was exactly what I expected. And to me, it looked just as stupid as the original. Really, it, even more so. Like they throw in they throw in a Justin Bieber. And oh. I, I hate Justin Bieber. So you put him into a, a sequel to a movie that I hate. You just make me despise it even more. He's not even that culturally culturally relevant he's, anymore. He's really not. He's really kind of just, you know, we talk about him in between his ridiculous antics, mm-hmm. and so they, they put him in the in the movie. And I, he, it looks like he's got a bit role, fine cameos. Movies like this kind of thrive on cameos sometimes, right? And you know, the rest of it just kind of looks like. Typical stupid stuff, you know. Even some things that you I've seen in movies, you know, hundreds of comedies, hundreds of times before, like the whole "throw me a knife" bit, and he throws him a uh, knife, and what do you think happens when he throws a, throws him the <laughs> knife? He catches it successfully with no comedic outcome. Oh well, yeah. Um, and it, <laughs> I don't know. It, I, I have no interest whatsoever in seeing it. I won't see it. Wow, so. interesting. Um, I, I, saw, I didn't actually get a chance to actually watch the trailer, which is horrible because we're on a podcast talking about the trailers. Um, but I did play it before, like when you were coming in. Um, yeah, I, I'll, I'll see it and I'll see the original before I see it. But I mean, yeah, we, I mean, we'd probably be better served going on to the next one in the yeah, discussion. Yeah. Um, this one I have seen the trailer for and, uh, we teased it before earlier in here. Um, Mr. Wayne. Clark Kent, Daily Planet. What's your position on the Bat Vigilante in Gotham? Civil liberties are being trampled on in your city. People living in fear. He thinks he's above the law. The Daily Planet criticizing those who think they're above the law is a little hypocritical. What not you say? Considering every time your hero saves a cat out of a tree, you read a puff piece editorial about an alien. I could burn the whole place down. Most of the world doesn't share your opinion, Mr. Wayne. Maybe it's the Gotham City in me. We just have a bad history with freaks dressed like clowns. Boys! Mm. Bruce Wayne meets Clark Kent. Ah, I love it. I love bringing people together. How are we? Lex. Hi, hello. Lex, it is a pleasure. Ow, wow, that is a good grip. You should not pick a fight with this person. Uh, Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice. It doesn't seem like you have high hopes for this I... being a good movie. I, I, and I know how your feelings were towards mm-hmm. Man of Steel. So yeah. So okay. So Batman v Superman comes out March twenty fifth. It was moved. <laughs> it was moved because they. Do you remember they had um, set it on the same date as Captain America: uh, Civil War? Oh, I did not know that they did. You didn't that. know that? No. Yeah, they were going head to head. This that's is such like... a, a such a bad idea, and not because I think one's going to be better than the other, but. You you want to with two movies like that you want to give those movies their time to oh, make the absolutely. money. Oh, absolutely. And they, I think, I, and I might I might be wrong. I'm like ninety nine percent sure that this is how it all went down. But they basically were playing chicken <laughs> uh, about the date because they were they both Marvel and uh, Warner Brothers and DC and all that. They had they had set those those dates, and then I think when the Winter Soldier came out, <laughs> I think <Yeah. laughs> that was when DC was like, uh, well. We're gonna release this sooner so you can see <laughs> right. it first. J slash K. Winter yeah. Soldier was amazing. Right. Um, and you know, it, okay. So this trailer, this is the third trailer that we've had. Um, this is the second. Yeah, no, trailer. this is the uh, third trailer. We had a teaser, mm-hmm. uh, a short teaser that had a little bit of footage. That they, right. they had the Comp Con trailer, and now we have this trailer. Yes, and uh, that teaser, I was totally digging it i was very interested in it and then the first full-length trailer or the comic-con trailer i was into it too and then this one this one i saw it and i just thought 
Oh yeah, Zack Snyder is making this movie. Uh, <laughs> it's more Zack Snyder. Hey, I, yeah, I'm I'm not I'm a, a fan. Def- I'm a defender. Interesting, of Zack Snyder. Um, Interesting. And what I, did you think of the trailer overall? Uh, it's my favorite Superman or Batman v Superman trailer so far. Oh really? It was. Um, Interesting. But it has me worried too. Mm-hmm. Um, and here's why. It, this is this is gonna be a huge movie. Mm-hmm. There's gonna oh there, yeah no denying so, that. There's and I'm not talking about. In terms of uh, sales or popularity, mm-hmm. I'm talking about there's going to be a lot in this movie. Mm-hmm. I mean, they, they've announced that they're they're going to have Flash, they're going to have Al- mm-hmm. Aquaman at some point in this movie. They've already shown Wonder Woman, mm-hmm. so you're you're going to start off. I mean, it's Batman v Superman, so they're, that that's the big conflict is right. these two going at it. So you got to feel that there's going to be at least a couple of interactions between these two where it comes to blows, right? Then you're going to have, you know, if, if you haven't seen the trailer, watch the trailer, they're going to have uh, Doomsday in it. Right. And so now you have the big uh, the big bad guy, which you already knew Lex Luthor was going to be in it, but Lex Luthor in a film like this is not exactly an imposing force. Right, right. So you, you have to have a secondary bad guy, and Doomsday is it. And Doomsday is the bad guy when it comes to Superman. Right. So, they, so people are saying that, They've shown all their cards on this movie, and, mm. and that's that's just not true. So, so what's made me worried is there's still things that they have not shown their cards at, and to me that is almost like saying there's going to be too much in this movie mm-hmm. because you're going to have the conflict between Batman and Superman. You're going to have the conflict with Lex Luthor. Then you're going to have Doomsday, and somewhere in the midst of all that, you're going to introduce uh, three new characters, Wonder Woman, mm-hmm. Flash, and Aquaman, and maybe even Cyborg. I want to say Cyborg is scheduled to be in this movie really? too. And that is that is so much. And maybe there are going to be cameos. <laughs> uh, maybe not. I don't know. But I'm somewhat worried that they're going to overfill this and Spider-Man 3 it. Maybe right, not right. To- Maybe not Tobey Maguire, you know, brushing his emo <laughs> hair and dancing in a and beating his girlfriend mm-hmm. bad, but I, I think there's a possibility that they might overstep their uh, ambition on this one. And I hope that's not the case, because I, I think everything I've seen so far looks amazing. I think Ben Affleck is going to be a, mm-hmm. an amazing Superman. I like... But, so, right? Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Going to be amazing Batman. Um, Henry... Uh, Henry Cavill. Cavill. Uh, I think he did a great job, in my opinion, in Man of Steel. Mm-hmm. I think he's going to continue to do a good job. And I'm really interested to see how Jesse Eisenberg does Lex Luthor. And so, and from mm-hmm. what I've seen, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm hopeful. So him, so Jesse Eisenberg in the trailer, in this trailer, didn't uh, bother you or anything? No, like I, I, really? I like him. I, I like the how eccentric he mm-hmm. is. I, I like uh, his energy in it. Like every huh. you know, the Lex Luthor in the comic books and the and what we've had so far, mm-hmm. he, he's he's kind of he's toned down a little bit. Um, a little bit subdued, but I, I kind of like the eccentric billionaire genius uh, mm-hmm. role. And Justin Eisenberg could pull that off. Right. So I, I, I'm really excited to see how he plays it. And I, I don't know. I like how it's presented so far. I love that scene in the in the trailer between him, uh, Bruce Wayne, and Clark Kent. That's really that's an amazing scene for me. See that? That's what killed the trailer for me. Really? Honestly. No. Yeah. Like I had I had problems with you know them showing showing their hand with Doomsday and all that and showing all that stuff, um, but at the end of the day, the most damning uh, part of the trailer for me was the second that the second that Lex Luthor pops up. It's like he's he's very animated. He's very you know he's very. Uh, not threatening or anything like that, and I don't have the context of irritating, past Irritating, maybe. Yeah, he's he's kind of just like the way that he, the way that he it speaks in it, and and the way that the. Like I, see, I think he's antagonizing them. I think he knows who they both are. See, and with context, maybe I'll feel better about it. But it just seems like without that context of him knowing knowing their identities and everything, because I mean, you know, Clark Kent wearing those glasses, right? You know, yeah, I mean, know. I I, I um, still think it's two actors. <laughs> right, right. But uh, just the way that he it's. It seems like okay. The audience knows, but Lex Luthor, he, from our perspective, doesn't know. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm butchering this, but I think that the way that he, the tone that it, it was, it was, uh, it was a shift in the tone of the trailer for me. It, it, it was. Felt, it, what, what did you think about the first interaction between Bruce Wayne and Clark Kent? I thought that it was pretty good. Um, uh, you know, I really have faith in Ben Affleck. Ben Affleck, but I, I and I really do. But I think that something about the the drawl that he has in 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 the way that he's having uh, Bruce speak is a little. 
There's see, something about it I can't put my finger on. Uh, see, I, I enjoy it because at this point he he's been Batman for a while. Mm-hmm. He's kind of the a kind of a grizzled Batman, and yeah. I, I can kind of see it in the way he speaks with it. And I, I love just his interaction with him. And first of all, I love the uh, this little smirk he gives Clark yeah. Kent. That to reminded start me off. of Gone Girl because because part of that yeah. was uh, that that's a classic like Ben Affleckism right. basically. Um, yeah, and I, and I didn't have a problem with the actual dialogue, the actual speech in the dialogue, but I, I just think that there's something about it that seems like I need to see more footage of him as Bruce Wayne. That's fair. Um, but as soon as as soon as Lex Luthor popped up, it was just like it almost felt parody to me, or almost like a parody that uh, it's he's antagonizing them, but you know he. <laughs> I, and maybe with context it's better, but it's like he's antagonizing them, but there's not really a reason. Like, w- are we to assume that both Bruce Wayne and Clark Kent know that each other are their are their identity? Well, you have to you have to assume that at least uh, Clark Kent knows who Batman is because okay. he can see, he can see through his mask regardless. Oh yeah, well that's a good. So, point. Uh, but I don't know what interaction they've had before. Then I think Batman probably knows who mm-hmm. Clark Kent is. I, I think at that point, all three of those characters probably know who they are. Okay, and yeah. so I, I see. Uh, I, I think Lex Luthor's antagonized them. Lex Luthor has always resented Superman because mm-hmm. Earth's reliance on him. He, he doesn't think that we need to rely on an alien, and so he wants to break Superman down pretty much. Right. So I, I think he's antagonizing him, and I, I'm excited for it. I'm excited yeah. for any scene that has those three characters in it. So I'm in... Yeah, I, I'm... You know, I'm. I'll see it. I'll definitely see it. Obviously, but I'm just not too excited it. for it. No, I'll see it in the theater. <laughs> um, but another thing about it was that the the music in the trailer just did nothing for me. It was it was a little off. Yeah, it, it was, I, I I'll go, I'll agree with you on that one. Uh, the tone. I don't know the the way it just kind of stopped and started and stopped yeah, and started. I, yeah. I didn't really appreciate. It that. seemed very generic and very. It just it just didn't fit. And I think part of that was like the music didn't fit, and for me the the interactions of the characters in the trailer didn't fit together, and it, all of it just kind of meshed meshed together in this in this way that made me think like this this could be a disaster. <laughs> it could um, it very yeah. well could be, uh, and like I, I'm super excited for it, but I am you're super man excited for it. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, uh, I'll get I'll get bat manner. Uh, I'll get batter. Let's beat batter, you with a bat batter. man. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm super excited for it, but I'm also not naive enough to think that mm-hmm. it could be a, a terrible movie. Yeah, um, I'll have to rewatch Man of Steel because before when we were walking into Star Wars uh, on Thursday, I was talking to your brother about about Man of Steel, and he's a huge Superman fan. Right. Yeah. Um. So like, yeah, I I need to revisit that movie. Um. It ha- it has its problems, but I mm-hmm. I enjoy it. I, okay. I enjoyed it. Nice. Um, they went a little too Michael Bay at the end, mm-hmm. but I think that's kind of set up for Batman v Superman. Right. And, and I said that walking out of the theater, and it's like I, I think when they come out with that, it's going to be Batman saying, "Hey, moron! Great, right. you saved the world, but you destroyed an entire city and killed mm-hmm. thousands of people in the process." Yeah, and that's why one of the one of the first shots in the first the, in the Comic Con trailer of seeing Bruce. Uh, like watching the devastation yeah. and running into the into the uh, the the, uh, the wreckage and all that. Those. Yeah, like first of all, it evoked just images of nine eleven. Oh, absolutely. And, and yeah, and and seeing that like that like that angle, I could I'm I'm totally on board with. Right. But um, also also the design of Doomsday. I I have no. We'll, we'll see. I mean. <clears throat> That's that's hard. Like how do you, how do you do Doomsday? Yeah. Like, and I have no context for the comics, but I basically all I thought all I thought was like it looks a lot like Abomination from 2008. It, it, yeah, <laughs> it, it does. Um I'll give you that one. Mm. Um but Abomination in that movie doesn't look like Abomination in the comic books either. Okay. So. Well, my my whole thing is that it it looks a lot like like in terms of visual effects, it looks like Abomination, and that movie was, uh, what seven years ago? Yeah. And seven. it makes me think like, is that as far as we've gotten with with like like can they not do anything better like to to wow us with it? Um, I don't know. Then again, I we have haven't no seen context. them in action either. So that's you know, true. So. There's a lot but, we still haven't seen. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, don't judge a movie by its trailer. <laughs> so having said that, let's judge some more movies by the trailers. Good idea. <laughs> um, 
so we talked about the music in uh, uh, Batman v Superman, and I want to point out music in a trailer that is phenomenal. Uh, here's I, I'll actually cut in the audio to this, but here's Captain America: Civil War, the trailer for it. Captain, while a great many people see you as a hero, there are some who prefer the word vigilante. You've operated with unlimited power and no supervision. That's something the world can no longer tolerate. I know how much Bucky means to you. Stay out of this one, please. You only make this worse. You saying you'll arrest me? There will be consequences. Captain, you seem a little defensive. Well, it's been a long day. If we can't accept limitations, we're no better than bad guys. That's not the way I see it. Sometimes I want to punch you in your perfect teeth. And that movie is coming out May 6th. Um, man, that trailer. It's, it's so great. Of the list, it's my favorite so far. I mean, mm. it's besides the, the – and hate – I'm sorry to keep harking back on it, but <laughs> besides the Force Awakens trailer, mm. that – that's been the best trailer I've seen in a long time. It's, yeah. it's just, it's perfect. Oh, absolutely. Um, I've Googled to no end and to no, um, uh, to no end, uh, trying to find the music for that trailer. Cause I want that music. I love that. It music. will, I'm sure be on the CD release, uh, for the film. That's true, but that's so far away. <laughs> it is. Well, you got internet connections. I'm sure you can torrent. I is well, that the, is that the word? Is that the internet word? Uh, 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 you mean by legitimately yeah. <laughs> on the internet? <laughs> no, but I would just I would just like to know, like, have access to that to that track because it's really good. But it anyway, is super yeah. is, and it's it's such a good setup for mm -hmm. the uh, relationship between Tony and uh, Steve Rogers mm -hmm. in this movie because you know it, it's a it's two guys that have had in incredible amount of history in a short amount of time and right. have been very close to one another and now there's this it, it's such a good music to mm -hmm. show the divide that is becoming between them yeah very sorrow sorrowful right. and, and it's got like a whimsy to it that's like it's it's you know we've this is i've lost count of how many marvel movies there is but this is oh, our so, upteenth one right and like so we know going in the tone and we know we know what kind of movie it's going to be uh it's got that same it, it, well it's directed by the Russo brothers who also did the Winter Soldier and it's got kind of that same like like the Captain America movies of late have had that same aesthetic and everything right. and it's just it's just like all that worked together to make just such a strong trailer and um a lot of people well uh, from the uh, comic nerd um, <laughs> perspective. Uh, a lot of people, like I've heard, compla not complaints, but um, hesitation about the scope of it because obviously Civil War in the it's, comics is huge. It's, it's going to be big. <clears throat> I mean, it's they, you know, unlike the Batman v Superman trailer, Captain America Civil War, they held their cards super close to the chest on this mm -hmm. trailer because you got to think they they haven't shown. The two major villains. Right. They haven't shown Crossbones. They haven't showed. Uh, That's right. The Captain Z Zemo. Uh, I, sure. I'm unfamiliar with the uh, main antagonist <laughs> hmm. uh, in this movie. I forgot there were main antagonists. Holy yeah, and, and it's the guy that played uh, the sniper in, in Inglorious Bastards. He plays. Oh yeah. Uh, I, I think it's Captain um, Zemo or something. Oh crap! I know his name. Is it Daniel. Um, Daniel Brew, Brew, like Brew or something. Brew. Brew. Well, uh, he was also in Rush with uh, uh, Chris Hemsworth, actually. Yes, he yeah. did a great, great job in that movie. Oh, it, that was great! That oh, was yeah. an amazing movie. Mm -hmm. um, but so, yeah, they haven't showed the the two main uh, bad guys mm -hmm. in, in this film. They haven't shown like they maybe showed a third of the heroes that are going to be in it. Right. So, I mean, they're no Spider Man, whole, no, no Spider Man, and. Me and my brother were discussing this, and he thought they were going to put Spider Man in. I didn't mm -hmm. think so. I, uh, they're waiting for that. Yeah, and they, you know, you got to think they didn't put Spider Man in it. They didn't have Vision, mm -hmm. who's going to be in it. They didn't have. Uh, they had a little bit of Black Panther, mm -hmm. um, but other than that, you know, there's a lot of people. That, there was no Ant Man, right? Um, yeah, so there, there's still a lot that has yet to be seen for this movie, and. To me, that was brilliant because mm -hmm. they, they're not showing everything just yet, and you know, it makes me super excited to see what else is going to be in the film. And, and I hope it stays that way. I hope they don't, oh, yeah. you know, a few months down the line, they don't release another trailer. We're like, okay, guys, here's everything. Right? Yeah. Like, um, 
again, we can't keep bringing it back to this, but uh, Star Wars marketing was phenomenal. Yeah, absolutely phenomenal. And I hope that um, I hope that uh, like I hope that that the the way that 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 the marketing campaign for Star Wars um didn't reveal a lot. I hope that that doesn't spoil me for other marketing campaigns for other high profile movies. It probably will. It will. I'm it, sure. It raises yeah. expectations. It can't. Oh yeah. It, you can't help but feel that way, especially mm-hmm. when you're talking about a franchise that are both now owned by Disney. So right. you kind of expect that kind of uh, high quality from both of them. Yeah, totally. Um, yeah, uh, Captain America just looks looks great. Looks great. I would love um, if they snuck in Daredevil into the movie. God, that would be so awesome. I, that that'd be fantastic. Ugh. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it doesn't even have to be big. Just mm. maybe, maybe just a, a short scene, right? Uh, something because I, the, the series was fantastic, and uh, obviously he fits. In, it's it's in the same universe, right? Daredevil was in the original comic book run of Civil War, so mm-hmm. if he put him in there, snuck him in there, it'd be fantastic. It would be that would be amazing. I I, I highly doubt that they will. <laughs> I, I doubt it too. But, but hey, you know, you never know. Yeah. Could be a little. I would love like a throwaway line, even. That would yeah. be just great. Yeah. Um, just some kind, something to acknowledge the fact that this amazing television series is now part of their universe. Right. Oh, that'd be great. Um, speaking of big franchises, though, I'm trying to I'm trying to segue. It's a good segue. Thank you. It'd be better if the segue is if you don't acknowledge your segue after the segue. Well, that's just how I talk. Really, <laughs> <laughs> I like to just uh, um, narrate your life. Narrate <laughs> everything. Yeah, it works a lot. It works really well when I'm like out with girls and stuff. Like, right. like, hey, yeah, this speaking is pretty. Speaking of dates. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah yeah um, <laughs> that's that's way too close to reality actually <laughs> anyway speaking of franchises and actually speaking of girls that uh have a have a that i'm obsessed with um <laughs> x-men apocalypse came out with a trailer uh of course directed by brian singer it comes out may 27th it is the sequel to x-men days of future past which I I don't I'm sure we've talked about X Men Days of Future Past, uh, you and I have. Yeah, um, yeah, of course we have. And that movie just blew me away. Really, S- still does. Um, yeah. that was another one that had almost a, a perfect trailer too. Mm-hmm. And that that movie, it's it's hard for me to imagine Apocalypse topping that. Yeah, that's not to say that I don't think it could happen. I'm just saying that Days of Future Past was just an, an amazing. This is almost the perfect X Men film. Oh, absolutely! For, for fans of the comic books, or even fans of, like the cartoon show, mm-hmm. which was a great '90s cartoon show. But yeah, it's uh, it's going to be rough for X Men Apocalypse to reach expectations. Totally. Um, that's not to say that I'm not excited for it. Right. I, I am excited for it. Um, originally, w- when the what was it Entertainment Weekly is the one that showed the 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 set photos. Uh, yeah, of uh, of Apocalypse? Apocalypse. I think it was EW. Yeah, you, you know, I of course, just like everyone else, I was kind of weary about mm-hmm. how Apocalypse looked, and but I I wasn't quick to bash it because I, I right. know there's a lot of post production that's going to happen, and so far, uh, it's it's turned out a lot better from what mm-hmm. I've seen in this trailer. You know, at first he looked like Ivan Ooze from uh, <laughs> right. uh, Power uh, Rangers. Power Rangers, yeah. And I, I believe listen to your guys' podcast a couple weeks ago. So the costume yeah, Starbase designer. Indie? It, what's the Starbase Indie? Where the, well, the Starbase Indie uh, episode, yeah. Where they said the costume designer, one of the set designers. Yeah. Was, that's, yeah. That, yeah. That, <laughs> I didn't know that either. <laughs> that's crazy. Right. And also, I'm fully aware that we're, re, we're rehashing old stuff from a couple <laughs> weeks ago. I apologize for that. But anyway, um, thank you for pointing that out, Fekus. No. Um, <laughs> Sorry. No, it's okay. Um, but yeah, I, I didn't know that either. And I was very hesitant about it too. Or I, I'm not hesitant because I, I didn't really give two craps about whether or not he looks weird or anything. Cause well, I, I want him to I look faith. believable because yeah. he's one of the most imposing uh, bad guys in the, in the Marvel Universe, not just the X-Men Universe. Yeah, and see, that's the thing. I have no context for that. So I, I was just like, okay, I'm not going to get in a huff about like, oh, he's this color or he's this kind of like look. I thought right. it looked kind of goofy. But like you said, I know that there was post-production. But um yeah, and, and I had a funny reaction. I don't remember if I said this a couple of weeks ago, but while watching the trailer for the first time, I noticed about halfway through, like, wow, they're really not showing Apocalypse. Yeah, and, and I um, thought that was almost worrisome. I was like, yeah. maybe they're going to change some things. But then they you get a kind of a reveal at yeah. the end of the trailer. And, and he like, looks fine. He does. He looks like Apocalypse. Mm-hmm. I, I think that it does a great job. It still amazes me that that's Oscar Isaacs under <laughs> Oh, me too. That. Oh, he's – God, he's, yeah. He's – God, he, he's just shot up to – one of my favorites oh, in yeah. the last like year and a half. Me too. Between uh, Ex Machina, mm-hmm. 
Star Wars. Star Wars. Um, yeah. He even did a great. It was an all right movie, but uh, a most dangerous year. He, he did a great oh, job yeah. in that one too. I never got around to seeing that. I. It's it's kind of slow, but mm-hmm. he 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 pulls off his role. He does an amazing job in that nice. film. So I, I enjoyed the film for yeah. what it was. I I like him a lot as an actor, and I'm. Um, spoiler for our Force Awakens episode, but I'm excited to see more of him right. um, in, in the years to come, whether it's in X-Men Apocalypse or future Star Wars movies or in uh, Ex Machina-esque uh, sci-fi movies. I thought you were going to say Ex Machina 2. The right. Mo- <laughs> the Machinine. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, and he uh, he seems like a totally cool guy, so uh, like right, I yeah, heard him on I- the Nerdist podcast. and Yeah, but... um. Yes, and also I noticed in the trailer for X Men Apocalypse, and I I wanted to get your read on this. Um, Jennifer Lawrence hyphen hurt, fingers crossed. <laughs> I seriously, that, you're gonna have to fight a lot of people for that. I and would, me, me being one of them, I, <laughs> God, I'm in love with her. I am too. Every time she's, I see it, she she's just she just seems like the coolest person. She like does. Every, and that's the weirdest thing is that I was uh like I was going through her IMDb page as I want to do. I thought you were gonna say um, like her diary. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I was going through her garbage. And, um, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's going through IMDb, and really, I mean, aside from the X Men movies and um, uh, the Hunger Games movies, she only has like a f- in in David O. Russell movies. Yeah, it's David O. Russell. Yeah, like she only has like a few like like really like big like acting movies. Basically, like she has Winter's Bone, and, and then I still have to see that movie. I, I've heard I've heard good things. It's pretty good. It? It's it's uh it she she does really well in it, and it's kind of a uh, it's. <sighs> It depicts a region uh, in a dialect, in a, a certain socioeconomical kind of type of person, I guess, or, or type of people that I'm just not familiar with. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's a, it's an interesting view of that, but it's not something that really interests me or anything. Um, it's, a, it's a good story. I haven't seen it in a while, but she's phenomenal in it. And uh, it, But it's weird that she... Like she's one of if she's the biggest star like she, yeah, the highest paid actress something like that. Oh no, she can't be. Yeah, uh, no? like I, I feel like Julia Roberts probably still holds that title. Really? Yeah. I mean, I, I don't have anything to back this up. On, yeah. But I feel like I'm not saying that she's an underpaid actress, but mm-hmm. I don't think she's quite made it to that. I, I could be wrong. I, I mean, think that there was some. Maybe I'm mixing up um my references to it. Um paid actress because she had that big i mean she could because she's had a lot of huge roles especially right. with the hunger games and things um, she's extremely high profile uh she's the highest world's highest paid actress of oh, wow, 2015 yeah. at least um but yeah and and you know and she does great she's 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 great like you said in well, I, i've never seen anything bad I've, she's never done a bad job in anything i've ever seen right like and, i fell in love with her the first time i saw her was in x-men when she right. the, the first x-men she was in mm-hmm. uh first class and I, she was gorgeous in that mm-hmm. and i fell in love with her then uh but you know looks aside mm-hmm. uh she's a great actress yeah and in off screen she has this personality to her that that i think that that's you know working very well in her favor oh, absolutely especially for lonely podcasters who have <laughs> cats um <laughs> Anyway, so but yeah, and and what I noticed in the trailer to actually get back on topic, right, yeah. um, what I noticed in the trailer is that there is so much of it. Uh, like I know, I I've heard like like through different podcasts and everything that she's she's had like not um, like people have discussed this that she's she's not into the X Men roles or anything like that. Like she's not she's not that interested in in the role. She doesn't like doing the makeup and all that stuff. I I've heard um, that makeup is terrible. I can't say I blame her. Yeah, and I think she part of I'm going to butcher this. Please if you're listen if you're curious to know more, google this on your own, but this is my perception of it or my per, my uh what I what I've heard um second third hand is that she I think in for uh for Days of Future Past, she had it in her contract that like they couldn't do like they had to redesign the makeup or something like that cuz she didn't want to have to deal with like actually sitting through like all of makeup right. or whatever. Um but so so that's a big point of contention for her and what I noticed in the X-Men Apocalypse trailer and I'm trying to figure out if it's because she's the highest paid actress of of 2015 or if because she hates doing the makeup and stuff like that, but in the trailer she's not Mystique, she's just right, you know she's... normal hot as hell, Jennifer Lawrence. Lawrence. Um, so I'm kind of wondering if that's like marketing, kind of like, 
like just you know doing uh doing like uh oh hey she's everywhere so she's here or if it's more like she's like okay i'll be in your movie i think this might be the last movie in her um contract is it um, i mean it wouldn't surprise me yeah i mean and, she's she's done three so yeah yeah uh, what's your perspective on that like do you think that there's anything there yeah, i think it's possible um mm-hmm. but then again if you look at the trailer as well uh nicholas holt is it, is it? yeah he, he's only in one scene where he's actually in full beast mode that's right which i which i kind of find i don't love that you mm-hmm. know i I feel like he should have come to terms with being Beast in the last one, and he should just be Beast. And that was a big part of it, too, is part of their characters is they're, you know, become, to like the they're terms. coming to terms with their mutations. Right. Um, and that could be marketing as well. I, I doubt it. I, mm-hmm. It looks like that he's going to have scenes where he's not Beast, which... Right. I don't it, know. I think we're, we should be past that point. Yeah, it could also be that they maybe they maybe they haven't rendered the maybe, effects. Maybe maybe not. I don't I don't know. But I, I mean, I could see both ways. I could see it uh, being marketing to be able mm-hmm. to say, "Hey, this is Jennifer Lawrence," and I can see it maybe. You know, she did have it in her contract where she's tired. Right. And uh, from what I'm told, that's like an eight hour makeup job. Yeah. And yeah. I, I can't say I blame her because that's, yeah, that's I, torturous. I wouldn't say that that, like, I'm not casting aspersions on my future wife to <laughs> saying that it's, that it's part of her, uh, um, like, like she's being a diva or anything. Right. I can totally sympathize with that. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, but the trailer looks great. I'm, I'm really loving that they, uh, do you know if Wolverine's in the movie at all? No, he is. Uh, they've said he's not. Now okay. it, it wouldn't surprise me if they snuck him in somewhere, mm-hmm. like um, first class, right? So yeah. maybe, maybe not. But I doubt it. Okay. I think Hugh Jackman's pretty much done. Like he's going to do this last Wolverine mm-hmm. film, and he's done. Right. I, I think he's probably tired of the role himself. Right. Um. It, have you said that? I'm glad that they. Well, obviously they can't. If they if he's not in it, they can't show any of Wolverine. Right. But it's nice to know that they that like. The franchise can, by the looks of it, sustain itself. Yeah, it d- without doesn't have Wolverine. to. Re- it doesn't have to rely on Wolverine, who is mm-hmm. arguably one of the most popular comic book characters of all time. Oh yeah. Um. And, and you know, I, I love him too. Mm-hmm. Uh. But yeah, it, it's nice to see that they they don't need to you know have him carry the movie. Right. Which I, I think this movie will do just fine. Mm-hmm. That, like it, it's got a couple people that I probably wouldn't have chosen for the role. Um. I, I I like Olivia Munn as a like a hostess type yeah. of deal, but I'm, I'm still not sold on her acting ability. Me neither. So we'll, we'll see. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, I didn't love her in that uh, horror film she did with Eric Bana uh, a couple years ago. She played his wife. It was the one with the little owl that went, ha, ha, ha. I don't remember that. He uh, he was a police officer in New York. Um, huh. Had uh, Joe McHale in it, too. He played his partner. I don't know what this movie is. Really? Yeah. I feel like you've discussed it on the... Really? Yeah. He, she played his wife, and Eric Mann is a cop with uh, kind of like supernatural sensibilities and... Really? Based on a true story, which doesn't mean anything nowadays, but... <laughs> right. Um, I can't remember the name of it. I'm looking it up now. Oh, Deliver Us From Evil? Yeah, Deliver Us From Evil. Okay. Yeah, she, she, like, she was supposed to have an accent in that movie, and I, I really went soul on it. Huh. Uh, yeah, I had no idea she was in it. Yeah. Um, that was kind of one of those movies that kind of came and went. Yeah, uh, for me as I, well it should have, because it, yeah. was, it was painfully average. Mm. Um, so, yeah, I'm not sold on Olivia Munn. And mm. that's not to say that I don't like her, because she's a great personality, too. Right. And, uh, you know, she she was great on Attack of the Show during mm. that run. Uh, maybe she'll surprise me. Hopefully she does, because I like Psylocke as a comic book character. Right. So, we'll see. Uh, I'm excited to see how they do Apocalypse. He's always been mm. one of the most imposing bad guys in the Marvel Universe. So, you know, you know so was... Uh, uh, Doctor Doom, and he was butchered too. But, <laughs> right. but uh, I have higher hopes for this film. Uh, nice. And I, so far, I like the trailer. It's not as good as the trailer for Days of Future Past was, mm-hmm. but it, I like it. And nice. I'm, I'm glad they're bringing a, a uh, bringing Storm back into the mix again. Right. And I like kind of the younger mm-hmm. younger way. And did you feel like that was uh, was Sophie Turner? Do you think feel like you could still feel the I accent? Could totally still hear the yeah, accent. Yeah, yeah. And it was, you know. It, it, it is whatever. What it is. Yeah, <laughs> she'll do fine as Jean Grey, but I, I was right. in there. I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> still, still, just a hint there. Yeah, but yeah. I'm sure it'll be fine. I loved the last shot of the trailer with uh, um, Xavier with yeah. the head. Well, th- that kind of confused me too, because uh, which I. <laughs> 
I'm fine with. I'm fine with him getting the shaved head. But mm-hmm. is that like so? A guy needs special powers to beat apocalypse. I got it. <laughs> right. I'll shave my head. <laughs> that way, my power can be amplified. It was blocked by my hair for too long. I'm very curious what, yeah, how so, they'll do that. Uh, so, how they'll? Yeah, me too. Yeah. So we'll see. I, 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 he looks great at, as it, but I, I right. want to know the context yeah. behind that. <laughs> it's like, does he have a mental breakdown and Britney Spears is, you know, <laughs> staring at the mirror and cutting his hair and like, you can never beat apocalypse. You'll never be good enough. <laughs> Oh, I would, I would love that. Actually, <laughs> I would actually love that. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah. So, so that's X Men Apocalypse. It'll, we'll talk about it in a future episode. Um, so, next up is uh, on June first, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles: Out of the Shadows uh, comes out, and they released the trailer for it. And I just watched it today for the first time. And oh. uh, yeah, it's you know the first one I thought was serviceable. It was a it was a crowd pleaser. It was Me too. fun. But and this trailer looks looks cool. Um, what do you think of it? I, you're wearing a Ninja Turtle shirt right now, and you have tattoos and all that. Yeah, I'm a huge Ninja Turtle fanboy, so of course I'm excited. Right. Um, I can't not be. You, Bebop and Rocksteady are in it. This is the first time they've been in the film. They, I, I love the look of them as humans, and I mm-hmm. love the look of them uh, once they're mutated. This trailer looks like it has a lot of the same things from the first one, a, lo- a lot of good uh, comedic dynamic between the brothers, a mm-hmm. lot of the good brother dynamic, which I fell in love with with the uh, shows and the comic books. Right. It, it's it's weird to me that they've changed actors so soon for uh, Shredder and Karai, but I'm not against it. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm not against it just because it's not like Sh- Sh- Shredder out of his uh, getup was exactly a... Uh, major character right so it's it's not that big of a distraction for me and one of my big complaints was with karai and the uh the first one was that she was older which in in the comic book she's you know the the granddaughter of shredder and she's you know late teens early 20s type of deal okay. so and that the actress that got the player was like 40 years old which is fine she's, it's just it doesn't fit the character of karai right. for me uh, so, so did it up. make you cry? Uh, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, it, it's it's not going to ruin. It's not going to take me out of the film at all. But I'm excited for it. I, I think it's going to be a lot of. It, I think it looks fun. Mm-hmm. And uh, t- for me, the first one a couple years ago, it, it wasn't perfect by any means. Right. And I'll defend it more than it probably should be, just because I'm a huge turtle fan. But this one looks fun. It, right. It just. I, Casey Jones looks like they had a good pick for him. I was just going to ask how you felt about that because he doesn't have – I mean he's no uh, Elias Cotius. Is that his name? Uh, something like that. Something like yeah. that, yeah. Um, he doesn't have the long hair. Which is fine. He, he yeah. doesn't have to have long hair. You know, it's – not every iteration of him has long hair. The current mm-hmm. comic book run of him doesn't have long hair. Okay. Um, so – it's it's not that big of a deal to me. His hair is not what's important. It's it's right. his attitude. It's how he's portrayed as a vigilante on screen. That that's what's important. Not, you know, styles change. It's not the right. 1980s anymore. <laughs> so I'm I'm fine with him not having long hair. It's cool. It looks like they had he has a good look for it. It looks like he has kind of the 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 attitude. I don't have a context for this the actor. I've never mm-hmm. seen him in anything. You've never seen Arrow? No, I've not okay. seen Arrow. Um, I heard good things about Arrow. Yeah, so. I've seen like five episodes of the first season. He's he's fine in it. Yeah, uh, the show was a little too CW for me. Oh, uh, but I can... I've heard it gets so much better, and I need to I need to go back and watch it. But. That's 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 a lot for me to go back and watch. Yeah, there's, there's so many things I have I, I'm interested in. It's, mm-hmm. So I, I'm not. I'm, I'll probably never watch it, but right. he looks like he's going to be a great uh, Casey Jones. Um, yes, yeah. It's going to be a fun movie, and judging from the first scene, it looks like they're going to bring some of the alien aspect into it, which if you're a fan of the comic books, it means Krang. So okay. ho- I, nice. I'm hopeful that they'll – That'll be uh, something that happens. We'll mm-hmm. see. So, and Baxter Stockman, um, he's he's kind of one of the cool underlying characters in the comic books and the shows too. Okay, played by Tyler Perry. That's right. Um, yeah. How do you feel about that? Well, here's the thing. <laughs> uh, when they first announced Tyler Perry in the movie, I was throwing things mm-hmm. because you know they put Whoopi Goldberg in the first one. I hate Whoopi Goldberg, and then I saw Gone Girl. Mm-hmm. And he was fantastic. He in Gone killed Girl. it in that. 
And so now I'm okay with it. Yeah. It turns out that he can do more than Medea. Right. So now I'm, I've am i settled down, and I'll let him do his thing as Baxter Stockman, and uh, I'll give him a shot. Because nice. he was fantastic in Gone Girl. So yeah. I'm okay with it now. Uh, I, I had a hissy fit to begin with, uh, <laughs> but I've been... Uh, I've been convinced to give him a chance. Nice. Yeah. I'm, I'm, you know, I'll, again, I'll see it. I'm not, I, I grew up, uh, for a brief stint loving Ninja Turtles and then Power Rangers kind of took over. Yeah. And so I, like, I have that kind of connection to it. I'm, I'm not uh, like a huge fanboy for it. And I enjoyed the first one. Um, and then the trailer looks like it'll be fun. Yeah. It'll, it'll be another fun movie and I'll, I'll see it. Yeah. I'll I'll see it. I might see it. You know, we'll see. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so that's Ninja Turtles Out of the sh- Shadows. Again, that comes out June 1st. And uh, speaking of aliens, um, see, yeah, I'm trying not to call attention to it. Um, <laughs> uh, Independence Day Resurgence uh, came out with a trailer. It comes out June 22nd. Um, according to IMDb, I think, you would think that it would come out, you know, beginning at july but anyway yeah the first one um, came out like july 2nd yeah back in 95 94 i want to say 90 f- maybe 96 even. I, I think it might be 96 i'm not sure but as the day when the world declared in one voice we will not go quietly into the night we will not vanish without a fight fall back But anyway, uh, you know, okay, this trailer, I've heard the, <laughs> I've heard the word uh, legacy sequel um, bandied around. We uh, have Creed. A, um, that's the first time I, I I immediately understand what it means. But right. That's the first time I've heard uh, legacy sequel. Yeah, I, I heard it on a podcast. This, I can't take credit this for is it. Clever as um, Yeah, right. <laughs> but. So, so they're taking these, you know, older movies, you know, and and you know, bringing resurrecting them. Um, there's a resurgence of them, ha. Um, <laughs> and so in in it's tapping into a nostalgia. Like I was excited for Jurassic World, and it didn't deliver, but I was excited for it because it, you know, tapped into my childhood. Independence Day is the same kind of thing. I loved it when it came out. Um, it was one of my earliest uh, movie theater experiences that oh, I remembered it. Me too. Being. That, that oh, was yeah. like when I was a young kid. That was the movie theater experience. Oh, absolutely. Me. Oh yeah. Um, and and I remember even seeing and I've said this before on the podcast, but I remember that was one of the first movies where um, we had HBO and they had the HBO first look thing. And oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I remember watching that. Right. Yeah. And like I was blown away because I was a little kid and I was watching like, oh, this is how they did all the effect shots for Independence Day. And I was like, they made models of yeah. cities <laughs> and then they blew them blew up. up. Like, I, like I was just blown away by that. And um, for the kids listening, for the younger people listening, before before computers, they had scale models. <laughs> um they don't do that anymore, really. I remember uh, one of the shots they were showing was one of the – when the uh, spaceship attacks a city and mm-hmm. you know the fireball goes and they had the model sitting vertical and that way the flame would go up. Yes. I was like, oh, man, that's amazing. That's incredibly clever. Right. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> then I remember like a year or two later seeing Dawson's Creek. Um, yeah. The Well, okay. If context of that. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's good. That, that's a transition that needs <laughs> well, to be explained. It is. Um, for our listeners, Fekus gave me a very, uh, very uh, incredulous look. <laughs> um, no, uh, I think it was the season two premiere of Dawson's Creek. Um, they uh, Dawson was an amateur filmmaker and he was, you know, he was working on a film that he was wor- that he was making um and he like had a model of cape side because you know he's a teenager of course he can get of course he can. Uh, yeah um <laughs> but i remember thinking like oh this is just how movies are made this is amazing to me <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah so that's that's a tangent but yeah, uh so the trailer for independence day resurgence i i i am adamantly opposed to roland emmerich in general i'm not a fan of his right yeah um, um... He's he's like the poor man's Michael Bay. He 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 really is. Have you ever seen um uh 10,000 BC? Yeah, oh god. One yeah. of the worst movies yeah, it I've was, ever seen. I I hate myself for seeing. <laughs> it. I went to the theater and saw it and oh. I 
Oh man, no words can describe how terrible of a film that was. Right. Ugh. I remember thinking, like during the movie, thinking if Mystery Science Theater three thousand oh, was still around, that would be amazing. And they're they're bringing it back. But I, I think, mean, oh, oh, I'm so happy about. Oh that. yeah, me too. Um, I love that they have Jonah Ray doing it too. I'm I'm a fan yeah. of his. Um, but anyway, uh, the Resurgence trailer though it. You know, it doesn't look like a Roland Emmerich movie. It, um, it doesn't. Yeah. And I, I remember when they announced Independence Day, the sequel. Mm-hmm. I, I was, the squeakquel. It's, uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I was not sold. I was like, this right. is just going to be a cash grab. And I I, I just couldn't get behind it. Mm-hmm. Especially because it was, it was so long after uh, the original. I You know. Yeah. Hell, it looks like it's going to be 20 years. Right. So maybe it did come out in 96. Mm-hmm. Uh, so when you know they were like, oh, the trailer's up. I was like, yeah, hey, I'll watch it. But right. you know, I'm expecting garbage. I <laughs> I was surprised. Me too. I think it looks great it it does i'm i'm a little bit i'm a little bit more hesitant than than you seem to be but i i think i tweeted this and i posted this but um no matter what like this movie could be absolute garbage but the way that they intercut the uh the iconic uh um bill pullman speech yeah the yeah. the bill pullman speech from the first one into the into the trailer i was like yeah, that's just, bought my ticket yeah i'm gonna absolutely. be there yeah and I, I like how uh, – I like Bill Pullman, the way he looks in the trailer too. Mm-hmm. He looks like uh, – what's his name? Uh, uh, Quaid, Dennis Randy Quaid. Quaid. Looks, uh, Randy Quaid. looks yeah. like Randy Quaid. Uh, <laughs> so someone's got to take that spot, I guess. Oh, yeah. But no, I, I was impressed. Um, mm-hmm. I, I like jo- Jeff Goldblum, of course. And, oh, yeah. You're human, so you should. Uh, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, this just looks like a fun blockbuster. And oh, yeah. He's made a career out of making horrible blockbusters. He has. Um, 2012, The Day After Tomorrow. Day, oh, God, The Day After Tomorrow. The scene where they're running from no. the weather and oh. shutting doors. It's good. Yeah. It's yep. good. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, by the way, the original Independence Day did come out in 1996. No? Well, there so, you go. Yeah. Um, and the trailer just it looks really good. It, it um the scale is a lot bigger. I like that there's an there's uh, there seems to be an implementation of it where they're like uh, uh, um, they talk about how their technology has evolved from the right. alien technology. I was a, I was a huge fan of that, and mm-hmm. you, I think we probably only got a small portion of it, but it was really neat watching yeah. like the, the newer technology that has developed over it. So right. I, yeah, that that's a cool concept that yeah. I, I really can get behind. Yeah, the scale looks bigger, but. We should also uh I'm not actually sure how you feel about this, but um we should also keep in mind that also the scale of Jurassic World. Yeah, you you're, and you're right, you're right. Yeah. Um so maybe I'm getting a little too excited too fast, but right. common too problem. fast, too expi- <laughs> God <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, personally. Oh, fair enough. Um ladies. Anyway, um <laughs> horrible. Um <laughs> So yeah, so that comes out June twenty second. I'm I'm looking forward to it, uh, hesitantly looking forward to it. Disappointed. Um, Will Smith is absent. Yeah, I heard he wanted fifty million dollars. Yeah, maybe if Concussion gets him an Oscar. Um, hey, I like Will Smith. He's one I of do my too. he's one of my faves. Um, mm-hmm. but he's not a fifty million. He's not. Actor. He's um, he's one of the most charismatic actors. He's one of the most charismatic people. Right. Um, yeah, but. Fifty million dollars? Yeah, that's a little. Uh, I mean, you're, it's a bit much. You're not Tony Stark, right? <laughs> but, um, so um, yeah, yeah, I'm disappointed to see him gone. But you know, there, I'm sure you know the newcomers will be sort of Liam uh, Hemsworth, the old being right? Who uh, he, he's grown on me. I, like mm-hmm. his first stint in the first Hunger Games movie, I thought he was so wooden and yeah. The, but he he's done a lot better. Like in the nice. the final Hunger Games, I thought he was really good and nice. I haven't seen that one yet, but I I liked him in Mockingjay Part One. Yeah, yeah, he did a good job in uh, in that one too. Uh, and probably probably that was the first time I actually saw him in something where I was like, looks like he can do it. Right. Um. So I, I'm excited to see him in uh, Independence Day Resurgence. Yeah. So me too. We'll have to see how it goes. Um. Speaking of. I can't think of it. Uh, uh, I can't think of any. Uh, Try harder. Right. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, I just noticed I have a typo in the notes. But anyway, uh, the next one in our list is the BFG. Have you seen the trailer for this? Are you familiar with it? I have seen the trailer and have no context for anything about 
about it. In fact, when I first saw BFG, my immediate thought went into the video game Doom, which one of the huh. one of the major guns in it is the BFG, which stands for Big Effing Gun. Wow. So, so I saw that, I was like, huh, Big Effing Gun, Steven Spielberg is enough games. So no, wow. I I have no, uh, I don't I don't know anything about the uh, franchise. I imagine this is a. Uh, a book it's it's an adaptation of a Roald uh Ra, i'm gonna butcher his pronunciation but a Raoul doll novel okay um uh, and i i have no context for it either so this is gonna be a brief discussion right and it's just a little teaser trailer uh the bfg stands for a big friendly giant oh i um, thought it was gonna be Br- <laughs> big effing giant right right <laughs> And that's where my mind goes too. I think of uh, I I read it as BFD, like you know, big f-ing deal. But um, I now I have to add a bleep. Anyway, um, <laughs> I was polite about it. Yeah, uh, yeah. Um, anyway, it comes out June twenty second. It's Steven Spielberg, which I still haven't seen. Bridge of Spies. Have you seen Bridge of Spies yet? Yeah, it's it's great. It really? Um, nice. Yeah, I, I liked it a lot. It's it's slow paced, but mm. it's a political thriller. Right. So it's it's gonna be. But you know, it's Steven Spielberg. I, I don't think mm-hmm. I've ever seen a. Yeah, Lost World. Um, <laughs> for the most part, he does fantastic jobs, and he continues right. to do. Fa- you know, it's it's got a dream team of actors mm-hmm. in it too. I mean, it's got Tom Hanks. I mean, yeah, can't go wrong with Tom Hanks. That's why I'm 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 excited to see it. Um, I I mean, it's almost out of the theater, so I'll probably have to see it like this yeah, week. Yeah, I'd next be week. surprised if it were even still in the theaters. Uh, I think it's still in a couple around Is here. It? Um, if not, I, it might have like a um an Oscar push or something. No, but, I, don't, I don't think there's anything in it. Really? Oscar worthy. Oh, that's a like, like it's a good it's a good movie, mm-hmm. but it's like I didn't walk out of it being like best picture and right. you know, Tom Hanks did a great job, but mm-hmm. he didn't he didn't branch out you know, to right. be anything bigger than I, I don't know. It was a good movie. Mm-hmm. Um I, I just don't see it award film or award season good okay so, yeah. nice but it's super oh, filmer, interesting so. um yeah i'm excited to see because i i have no context for it i i've somehow avoided seeing any trailers or anything like that so i don't know anything about the look of it or anything or no. plot wise so mm-hmm. I'm, I'm gonna see it eventually um but yeah the bfg it looks like it'll be looks like it'll be interesting there's not much in the teaser but well, um it, it's uh it's steven spielberg so i'll see mm-hmm. it based on that alone right um he's kind of a big deal yeah Apparently he's made a couple of films. Yeah, he's kind of a BFD. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, um, <laughs> but it does look interesting, though. Uh, yeah. I, I like the uh, the look of it so far. Mm-hmm. I know nothing of the story, but apparently there's a giant, right? And uh, turns out he's friendly and big. And so big. And yeah. Big. Um, so yeah. Uh, it's it's odd to me that they're putting that up against uh, Independence Day. Not oh yeah, seeing, that is odd. Seeing the dates uh, on there, huh. that's. Because Steven Spielberg, you know, he he kind of made the blockbuster, and mm-hmm. now they're gonna, he's going to be going up against uh, the one of the blockbusters next summer. Is. Right? Yeah, we'll, that's we'll interesting. See. That is, yeah. Huh? I'm curious if they'll uh, maneuver it a little bit. I doubt it. Yeah. Um. So next up is the Star Trek Beyond trailer, which uh, Star Trek Beyond comes out J- July seventh. It's the it's going to be it's it, next year is the 50th anniversary of the original series oh, premiering. Is it? Yeah, I did not know that. So it's it's got some weight behind it in a, a kind of troubled production because it was originally going to be uh, Roberto Orsi was going to yeah. direct it, um, and then he he was you know he left the project and then Simon Pegg came on to co write uh, co write it or work on the script, um, and then also Justin Lin is was replaced him. And the trailer has some interesting uh, interesting news come out afterwards but what did you think of the trailer itself i thought it was mediocre at best mm-hmm. um very very fast paced mm-hmm. very it, flashy it, it very very flashy and hey i get it uh that's not really i i'm not a big star wars star trek fan prior to right. uh, the recent movies i i've enjoyed the uh jj abrams versions very much so, which are, were apparently a little bit more action oriented than uh previously reg- regardless so right. I, I feel like they're still trying to uh, tap into that action uh, oriented space drama type of deal yeah so i i get it I, I, they're trying to attract the viewer mm. and you might show up and get an entirely different film so i'm not going to judge it too harshly yet but not, i mean it wasn't a good trailer it wasn't and and that's it's a shame because uh, I, I think that this was announced or or this this piece of news was um brought out like before before Roberto Orsi uh left the project or it might have been after when Simon Pig jumped on but um there was there was a uh, there was a 
there was a statement made that they, this was the movie that was going to take them onto their five year mission. Right. And well, the they whole... they established that at the end of the second one, yeah, exactly. which I thought was a awesome concept. I, mm-hmm. I like the exploration uh, mission, deep space, all that fun stuff. Totally, and like that's one of the the things that. Uh, so in the interim interim between uh, Into Darkness and now, I've watched the original series um, from 1966, and I've I've watched all but like four episodes of it. But I love it. I mean, I'm I'm so so for that original series it's it's incredible actually is william shatner just as over dramatic as the rumors <laughs> he's he's not as exaggerated as as you know parodies would make uh-huh. him seem but he's he's very uh he's very animated in it Fair. um but i what i love about what i love about that franchise or, or that original series is that it's it's what i want out of science fiction it's contemplative yeah. it's philosophical it's very uh deep and and explores some aspects of human nature that you wouldn't really get from a straight you know um uh, straight drama or something like that and you know you don't we don't get that a lot anymore with sci-fi movies you really um, don't it, it's pretty rare and, and it's not to say that it's uh it doesn't happen because right. there are ex films, machina, and... ex machina uh, sunshine kind of mm-hmm. it, it, and i've just been a recent viewer of that yeah um so there are movies out there that do uh take that concept and run with it but it's not as common as perhaps it should be in that genre right and i think part of the reason why the trailer was cut that specific way, that action heavy way. Um, I don't think it was to sabotage it, <laughs> but <laughs> the BC Boys song that was in that. Yeah, trailer. yeah. It's it's funny because um, seeing that they're seeing, just fighting for their rights. <laughs> God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> but seeing that trailer using that song, which was it was it was in the first movie, but yeah, it's not, I. I y- yeah it was unnecessary it was overbearing it, it was. was and seeing it like before or after i saw the independence day resurgence trailer which used you know used audio from the original right. from its original to great effect it's just like what were they thinking with well, Star Trek? Was, it, it's not even that great of a bridge because like okay it's the song that was playing in the car yeah. when kirk stole the car yeah after that it was yeah exactly so what who cares yeah and uh but uh, the trailer um, I'm wondering if it if it was cut that specific way because they knew that it was going to play before Star Wars and they wanted to make a flashier like action heavy one for to attract maybe the Star Wars audience who's not who's not into Star uh, Star Trek. But then again, they also have J.J. Abrams's right uh, previous two films. And I feel like J.J. Abrams is all the bridge you need with that. Yeah, I, I think that's yeah. a mistake to mm-hmm. to. You want to set yourself apart, I'd imagine. Yeah. You know, everyone knows that Star Trek is, you know, the uh, kind of the action adventure movie. So right. set yourself apart. Make yours, make yours a little bit more uh, pensive. Yeah. And I, so I, I don't get it. And we're really, I don't know why, but the shot that really bothered me in the trailer was the motorcycle jump thing. It's like, why do I need a motorcycle <laughs> jump in a Star Trek film? Yeah, I did like the bones and uh, bones and Spock. Spock that, that was funny. That was I, nice. I enjoyed that little that little uh, quip. And, yeah. But that. The new ones have been really good so far with the humor between the characters. Right. So I, I and then again, that was also yeah. Well, I'm I'm that was also probably JJ's you know hand on that too. Yeah. But then again, I mean, we have Simon Pegg co-writing this right. script, so Which, I'm sure that's going to be. I, I I'm hoping that he uh, brings it uh, levels it out a bit. <laughs> Me too, and I'm I'm sure that it's going to be. I'm sure it's going to be great. And he actually. Um, he made a statement, and I'll actually cut it and I'll put it in this episode. So. Um, here it is. Yeah, finally, can I ask you about the Star Trek trailer as well that yeah. we've just seen? Um, yeah. uh, what are your thoughts on it, and what do you think the reaction has been to it so far? Uh, it was very action-packed. I didn't. I, I, uh, yeah, I was. In, it was surprising. Uh, I found it to be kind of uh, the marketing people sort of saying, "Everybody come and see this film. It's full of action and, and fun." When there's a lot more to it than that. I didn't love it because I know there's a lot more to the film. I lo- uh, there's a lot more story and a lot more character stuff and a lot more st- what I would call Star Trek stuff. And uh, but I, you know they've, they've got to bring a big audience in. They've got to bang the drum to the Star Trek fans. I'd say, hang in there, be patient. We'll stick with you, mate. We'll stick, stick with, with you. you. Okay. Thank you very much. Yeah. So I I love I love the kind of conviction he has for this. Or you can tell, like in the tone of his voice and the way that he's like he's as confused as everyone else. Right. Which um, which gives me hope. Me too. Because it, obviously, if if anyone knows the tone of the film, it's gonna be a guy that acted in it and co-wrote it. Right. Right. So for him to be like, "Yeah, this doesn't <laughs> display what this movie is about." Right. That that gives me some hope that you know it won't be 
as my brother put it, you know, fat, something about <laughs> Fast and Furious and uh, Kirk living his life one half mile at a time or something silly like <laughs> right. that. Right. Um, <laughs> I, I'm I'm hoping that mm. they release a better trailer eventually, and it yeah. gets it, when an actor, especially this high profile Simon Pay, comes out and say, "Hey, this is not an actual right. portrayal." That well, I'll, I'm still giving it a chance. Yeah, and it's and it's a milestone movie for that franchise too. It being the fiftieth or fiftieth yeah, anniversary. Yeah, um, like it's a monumental one. So, it, like even me being like a new a new person to star Trek and I'm not, I'm not, I wouldn't count myself as a huge fan cause I've only not seen tricky yet. not yet, but I do plan on watching the rest of everything star Trek. Um, but like even having just the original series and JJ Abrams movies, like I know I like even that I'd be disappointed if that's the movie we got. Right. Um, knowing what star Trek can and should really be. Um, so hopefully, hopefully it doesn't disappoint and especially for this, this year. Cause that, I mean, it's it's got a lot to live up to. I mean, mm-hmm. we're changing directors. Um, it's it's had production problems, so it's start, starting off handicapped to begin with, right? Um, but you know, I I have faith in Simon Pegg. I don't. Mm-hmm. I've never experienced Justin Lin. I, I've never mm-hmm. seen any of the Fast uh, and Furious really? movies. I, it's, it, the franchise never interested me. I, I've, uh, I've, yeah, I, and, I can see that. And I'm not saying that they're they're bad movies because obviously I can't say that. I've never seen them, but it's, it's just never been in my wheelhouse. <laughs> they're uh, wheelhouse. Um, <laughs> <laughs> ah, uh, oh, I wish I was. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's you know they're uh, they're fun movies that after a certain point they become self referential to the point where they right. they're aware that they're you know. Uh, they poke fun at themselves. I mean, and, and who am I to judge? It? I like yeah. some. I, I like some terrible movies too. I, mm-hmm. I'm a defender of the prequels. So, <laughs> oh God, not a huge defender. I'm not right, gonna, right. But you know, there, I, I like movies that, for all intents and purposes, I shouldn't like. So right. you know, I'm sure a lot of people find those to be very good good movies. I like Vin yeah. Diesel. Mm-hmm. So yeah, and uh, it, so we'll we'll see. We'll see with Star Trek Beyond. Um, I'll see it. Uh, I'll see probably all of these. But I mean, I'm. I'm looking forward to it kind of, you know, hesitantly after after hearing Simon Pegg talk about right. it, I have more confidence in it. Um he yeah. he helped boost the com- my mm-hmm. confidence for the movie, so. Yeah. Cuz I, I love Simon Pegg. Mm-hmm. It's funny, he was uh this is this will be a brief tangent and then we can go on to the last tra- last trailer, but um Simon Pegg is the only if I'm not mistaken, he's the only actor to appear in both cuz he was in The Force Awakens. I can't yeah. take him out. I well, I think he was one of the I, I can't say for certain, but I think he was the because uh, he played an alien, so okay, he was yeah. in costume, right? And I think he was the uh, junk dealer on uh, okay, uh, Jack Jack yeah. Okay, um, but yeah, it, it's funny because he's he's the only actor to be in both a Star Star Trek movie and a Star Wars movie. That is true, which is just insane to me. <laughs> well, it's, um, it, it's, if you would have told me, you know, ten years ago that a man that directed a Star Trek film would mm-hmm. be directed in a Star Wars film, I would have called you a liar. Right. <laughs> I mean, that, that, it's amazing to me that that's something that's happened. And especially yeah. since there's such a, such a divide between the right. Star Trek fans and Star Wars fans. <laughs> um, but I, Hey, I'm for it now. Yeah. Yeah. It's, you know, it's a good time to, uh, be a fan of any of these. It is. Um, it's good. It's good time to be a nerd. It is. It really is. I wish nerdum would have been this popular in, uh, when I was a kid cuz then I probably wouldn't have been picked on so much. But. <laughs> right. I uh I I had this conversation with your brother when we were at Hooters before The Force Awakens, but I would I would love to be I would love <laughs> It's going to sound so weird. I'd love to be 7 years old right now. <laughs> <laughs> cuz I mean just the amount like new Star Wars movie every day or right, every year, every year and, and- Marvel and DC. And yeah, it, DC. it's a it's a great time to be into the fandom. It is, it is. Maybe I would actually be into them if I was a kid at this point. But maybe, maybe not. Yeah. Maybe you're just not attuned. It's okay. Yeah, you know, the force is not strong with this one. It is, it is what it is. Yeah. Um. So yeah, Star Trek's better than Star Wars. So fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. Um. Anyway, um, the last trailer we're going to discuss is Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. Now, Fekus, you are a fan of the Harry Potters. I am a huge fan of the Harry Potters. Yes, you just got a puppy named him Neville. Neville, that's right. Um, after after a, uh, oh, I can't remember the name. I was going to make a joke because you talked about Neville. Neville Chamberlain. Never Chamberlain. Yeah. Neville Chamberlain. Yeah. Never Chamberlain. Uh, Never Chamberlain. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Neville Longbottom is mm-hmm. who he is named after, and he's adorable. Well, a little well, Havanese nice. puppy. I have a cat named Pizza Roll now, yes, you do. so yeah. 
She's bored by podcasting. Anyway, <laughs> so Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them. I have to admit, um, when this movie was announced, was announced, I did not pay attention to it. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a fan of Harry Potter. I love the books. The books are incredible. The, well, that's that's where the majority of my fandom comes from. So yeah, the books are are perfect. Right, right. Um, and and the movies are are good adaptations. Or well, they're they're. they're they get good yeah um yeah. I, I don't have a whole lot of respect for chris columbus mm -hmm. uh as an a director uh so the first two to me were very mediocre mm -hmm. i just saw pixels so i have no no allegiance to chris columbus yeah. whatsoever anymore uh, why did you do that to yourself uh <laughs> and, and honestly like i equate to that to cutting on <laughs> Honestly, the reason why I watched it and the reason why I'll probably watch uh, Ridic uh, Ridiculous 6. Oh, man. Don't do it. Yeah. Well, the reason is because it's the end of the year and we're going to have our big oh, uh, yes, year in review. I so I need to pad out my worst of okay. list. Cause, well, you're going to pad it out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's going to be it's going to be. So Kevin grueling. James is the president? He's the f***ing president in that movie. Uh, yeah. I tweeted, Kevin James is the f***ing president in this movie and I hate everything. <laughs> I saw um, that tweet. Yeah. yeah. It's oh my god. Anyway, so <laughs> so right. to get back, back on topic, on target. Fantastic Beast and Where Stay to Find Them. Stay on target. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <Sorry>. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, Fantastic Beast and Where to Find Them. When I when this movie was announced, I was just like, okay, this seems like a cash grab. It's, I, it doesn't interest me. I don't. I don't have any context for. Or I just assumed it would be. Uh, is it like? Oh, is this how the books are made? <laughs> or like yeah. the. Uh, the the textbooks and stuff, and um, I don't know. And so when this teaser came out, it kind of uh didn't really do much for me. Um, I liked the seeing the Harry Potter font of yeah. the <laughs> of the title. Um, That's something you don't hear about a critique of trailers, right? I like the font, right? The font was good, and it interests me that J.K. Rowling is writing it. And it's it's interesting. Like I, I know she has that stage play. Um, what's it called? Uh, I I don't know. Something. It, it's like a two part stage play that's supposed to be like Harry Potter eight. Eight. Yeah. I'm like, why not just make that a movie instead of a play? But why not just move on? Yeah, that that too. Um. So what did you think of the teaser for Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them? Which uh, which you can find November 11th when it comes out. Um. Well. I'm kind of like you when I first heard the the movie release. I was just kind of like, well, okay, right. I guess fine. You guys want more money? I get that. <laughs> and so I didn't follow it closely. I, I knew that they cast Eddie Redmayne, and I, mm -hmm. I I like Eddie Redmayne, so that's I like him a lot. Too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> But then I saw the trailer, and it's called Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, and they don't show a beast. Well, you need to look for them, though. <laughs> <laughs> no, I agree completely. It's... So it, it did nothing to excite me. It mm -hmm. showed a hole in a building and Eddie Redmayne playing with a suitcase. Right. I, I don't know what I'm supposed to take away from that trailer. I, I Yeah, and granted, it, it, it's a teaser, so... Yeah, but it tease. even teasing... and brings out intrigue yeah. um you know the the first first force awakens trailer uh showed the new lightsaber showed mm. the millennium falcon against the tie fighters yeah um, the teaser for the bfg showed part of the right BFG. showed, showed uh, what the film was about right the the teaser for batman v superman the original uh teaser showed mm. our first look at uh you know the confrontation they didn't right. find anything but you know they had the do you bleed your gun right version great line oh yeah um so this this teaser trailer seemed pointless to me I, I, yeah. I took nothing away from it this seemed like the kind of teaser that was like oh everyone else is releasing right. stuff let's release let's something let's get too. this one out there we'll see I'll mm -hmm. probably see it because I'm such a huge fan of the Harry Potter series right. my wife is too so mm -hmm. even if I didn't have interest in it she'd probably take me drag me to see it anyway right but I just I have no enthusiasm for this yet yeah it, nothing grabbed me about this trailer and nothing has grabbed me about reading up on it mm -hmm. uh anyway not so. even the font not uh. even the font <laughs> it turns out there's eight other movies i can watch with that font right yeah yeah it's uh we'll see we'll see uh david yates is directing who he he directed he, the uh last three three or three or four four i'm not sure yeah, I know he definitely directed uh, the last uh, three, right. the two Deathly Hollows and um, 
Half Blood Prince. Right. I think he did Order of the Phoenix. That sounds uh, about right. Yeah, I, I want to say he did, and he did. W- he did a great job with mm-hmm. Deathly Hollows and uh, Half Blood Prince, mm-hmm. and maybe Order of the Phoenix. Once we <laughs> right. confirm if he directed that or not. Um, so, may- but he had great source material to work with. Yeah, totally. So, and hey, J.K. Rowling is uh, writing it. And it's her mm-hmm. universe, so maybe she'll put out a great movie. But yeah. I just I have zero enthusiasm yet for it. Right. Maybe that'll change. Yeah, we'll see in eleven months. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so that's all the trailers we have to really talk about. Um, yeah, what's your standout of all these all, of all these we've just discussed? Which, well, I kind of know the answer, but uh, which one's the one you're most looking forward to? The first two you're most looking forward to? Well, um, Zoolander Two is just going to be great. <laughs> it's going to be really thoughtful production. Mm-hmm. No, I, if the the easy the easy choice for that is Captain America right and I so I'm not gonna pick that because mm-hmm. of course I'm I'm pumped about Captain America but uh, I'm most excited to see Batman v Superman just to see how it turns out mm-hmm. not because I expect it to be the greatest movie um, but I, I'm hoping it's a great movie but that's one I'm anticipating because I just don't know right um, I. I could almost say Captain America: Civil War is going to be great. Oh yeah, or at least oh, yeah. that I'll love it just because you know it's it's my yeah th- that's my fan bo- fandom right. Um, if it's not good, then we're in trouble for Infinity Wars. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah. So so I have every bit of confidence that'll be a great movie. Um, Batman v Superman. I don't have the same confidence, but I have I'm hopeful. Mm-hmm. Um, so that one's my most anticipated one so f- uh, right now, and then of course Ninja Turtles. Just yeah, because. Yeah. It's, I'm such a fanboy, so. Right. <laughs> uh, I think, um, for me, it'd be Captain America, of course, and then X-Men Apocalypse. I, I think uh, you, the more I've seen the trailer, the less... Uh, I-, I haven't... Well, this is unfair to judge it against this, but like with the Civil War trailer, I can't get enough of that no, trailer. No, I can, I can watch that last little fight scene between oh, yeah. uh, Tony, mm-hmm. uh, Captain America, and uh, Bucky. Yeah. So, countless times oh yeah so and, so great yeah and and like the line uh so many lines in that trailer but the line right. where tony's like sometimes i want to punch, punch in your perfect, perfect teeth. teeth i'm like just the way that it's the i want to see it so bad um but yeah and and with the x-men apocalypse it's like it looks really cool we'll see how it yeah. how it does but i'm not like rewatching it over and over again despite having j-law in it yeah. um <laughs> but yeah so so we'll see we'll see um Having gotten through all of this discussion of trailers, do you have a potpourri for us? I, I do, and nice. I don't know how recent this movie came out, but I just got exposed to this movie. Uh, <laughs> I downloaded it to watch on the flight to Vegas back in October. Okay. Um, have you heard anything about Maggie, or have you seen Maggie? Yes, I haven't seen it, but um, I've heard about the the zombie movie with yeah uh, with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, so I, I was intrigued by this because I, I, I like the zombie franchise or franchise the <laughs> the genre the zombie right. genres and I it looked extremely unique mm-hmm. to me and I loved it um, nice it was probably the most unique take on on the zombie genre that I've seen and for anyone that doesn't know uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger uh, plays. <laughs> Plays a farmer, an American farmer, which is kind of odd. <laughs> well, of course, with his Austrian <laughs> accent, which which I get, I, I I can let that go. That's fine, right? But um, so he he lives in an America where there's a zombie infestation, but it's not okay. a typical zombie infestation. It's a zombie infestation where the uh, the zombie virus uh, takes probably uh, about a month and a half to two months to fully uh, transform that person into a zombie. Mm. So his daughter has been bitten and it's a movie that kind of is exploring the relationship of this family dealing with the daughter that has been bitten and that they know is going to turn eventually and de- seeing her deal with, the changes in herself, the stigma attached to uh, her illness mm-hmm. that she's from other people, her friends, her family, and it's it's a powerful and so, kind of a beautiful film. Uh, nice. Seeing the family dynamic, it's it's really good. And I'm not gonna say how it ends, obviously, but right. it's, it's it ends on a very just a, a powerful note. 
and I, I really enjoyed it. Um, I can't think of the name of the girl that plays his daughter, but it's the girl that played the younger sister of Emma Stone and Zombieland. Uh, Abigail Breslin. That's it. Gotcha. Uh, that is it. And there, there's a good, there's a fun scene in it. Um, where her and her friends are sitting around a campfire, mm-hmm. and she's not the only one that's been exposed to it. Another friend too has is going through the process, and it's kind of fun, neat interaction between her and her friends discussing the stigmas and even joking about it uh, huh. with each other. Um, you, you know how friends are, you know. Yeah, yeah. And it, it it's a neat interaction, and they they do show a uh, they don't like show a, the full on scene of how she gets attacked and bitten, okay. but they almost show it in like a flashback form, and it's it's almost hard to watch, but it's really? it's it's a really well done uh, shot, and it's nice. It really shows. Uh, it really did the best job I've seen in a long time of how brutal a zombie attack could be, mm-hmm. and it's it's scary. Like that scene, like it's not a scary film, but that that scene itself was kind of scary. Wow, it did a really good job for me, and I just I, I enjoyed it immensely, and I uh, I'm glad that I, I I wish I could have seen it in a form that wasn't on my iPad on the flight to uh, on vacation. Right, but I'll, I'll probably end up buying the Blu-ray anyway and rewatch nice. it. But I I super enjoyed it. Sweet, I've, I I just looked it up on Google Play because basically it, it's the end of the year. It's like I. Uh, <laughs> I I feel like this is like my favorite time of the year because this is the it's time. the most wonderful time <laughs> of the year. It actually is. Um, <laughs> not because of Christmas or holidays or family or anything, but because <laughs> because in an effort to see as many 2015 movies as I can, I'm I'm seeing as many as I can basically. And, uh, and that's, you've seen a lot this year. I have seen a lot this year, and this month even I've seen a ton. Um, hell, when we finish recording this, I'm gonna go see. Um, the Danish girl, right? Uh, with Eddie Redmayne. Eddie Redmayne. Um, but I want to be a woman. <laughs> but so so yeah so um that's one that I'm definitely gonna make sure that I lock it down in case uh so I can see it and if I like it I'll put it in my list. I, I'm curious because I have I've not talked to anyone yet that has seen it so I, I want. I want may, maybe I'm looking for validation mm-hmm. that it of my uh, enthusiasm for it, but I at least want to know what other people think about it. Okay, so. nice. Going but somewhat going back to our main topic for this episode. Uh, are you familiar with the movie Midnight Special? No, it's coming out next year. I think it was released kind of in a. Uh, or I think it was supposed to be released this year, or it had a festival run this year. It's the next movie from. Oh crap! I'm forgetting his name. Um, the guy who did Take Shelter. Uh, did you ever see that with I, Michael Shannon? I did not, but I like Michael Shannon. Yeah, that that movie was really good. Um, it's it's a great uh, it's a great like kind of paranoia movie basically. Mm. Um, but Midnight Special, it's coming out in um, oh Jeff Nichols is the guy's name. I don't actually see. Oh, the release date is March. But basically, it's about a guy who um, the government is after his son because his son has superpowers. And so it's basically he's on the run with his son. I'm intrigued by that. Yeah, and it's uh, it's kind of it's interesting because Jeff Nichols has this kind of this kind of uh, manner of shooting that's it's very kind of you know normal kind of like everyday person, but with um, abnormal or supernatural or um, uh, some kind of strange thing surrounding him. I'm basing this off of Take Shelter. He also did Mud. Ah, um, uh, that was such a good movie. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. So I'm really I'm really looking forward to uh, Midnight Special, and I like I I love Michael Shannon. Uh, it's also got Adam Driver and uh, uh, um, other people in it. But instant fan of Adam Driver now. Yeah, um, because of uh, uh, Inside Lil Will and Davis. Yeah, um, I was trying to th- I was I was pulling. Uh, I can't even remember the name of the movie. It that was Tina Fey movie. Yeah. yeah. Um, this is where I leave you. Yeah. But anyway, um. <clears throat> I can't. I can't segue to that. I don't. I don't know a good segue. Um. Anyway. Um. <laughs> my potpourri. Uh. If you did, you have any others? No. No. I'm good. Okay. Um. I was expecting you to bring up sunshine. Actually. I. I want to talk. To, uh, well. I mean, we can have a short discussion about it if, if you'd like. Okay. I mean, we can. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's, it's not a big deal. I, I enjoyed it, and we we talked a little bit about it the other night. Mm-hmm. Uh. Just. Um. I like I love Mark Strong in it. The uh, mm. what really tie- made me enjoy the movie more than anything was the imagery. Yeah, uh, oh, the yeah. imagery was fa- was fantastic. Cillian Murphy, 
good in just about everything. Mm-hmm. Michelle, yeah. I mean, a lot of strong actors, but what stuck with me was the, the imagery of the movie. Yeah. Like, I, I don't think I'd put it on a pestle that I think that you do. Oh, I do. Totally. Right. <laughs> um, and it's one of those sci-fi movies we were talking about mm-hmm. that we don't get uh, very, very contemplated, often. Right. Very contemplated. Uh... Very... Uh, I, one of my favorite uh, parts of it was when they found the, uh, the derelict ship, uh, mm-hmm. and I, I was – that was interesting. Uh, yeah, the I, flashes I, of the crew was yeah. a very interesting choice. Uh, so so I enjoyed that, and, and I enjoyed the movie a lot. It's um, – but I, I feel like I've seen movies that have done it uh, just as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, hey, uh, it was shot beautifully. So. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, um, I loved uh, I loved a lot of things about it, and we can have a in the future we'll have a longer discussion yeah. about it at some point. But um, I love the dichotomy between Kappa and uh, Mace in yeah. the movie. There was kind of a it's funny because in the commentary track for the movie, uh, Danny Boyle talks about it. it's a, it's almost a homoerotic kind of thing because they're very they're very uh, they're very alpha people, but like one's a very pragmatic person and, and the other's very. Uh, analytical and things like that and it's like every what i love about it is every time that there's a a situation where they need to problem solve something they both represent like different ends of the spectrum right and uh and i mean i love chris evans he's amazing you you know what i wish i would have saw that movie uh back when i was first exposed to chris evans Mm -hmm. because he did a great job of that movie, and my first experiences with Chris Evans were not that great. Not um, another teen movie. N- not another teen movie. Uh, the Fantastic Fours, mm-hmm. and uh, the movie he did with Keanu Reeves, where uh, they're police officers, uh, which wasn't a very good movie. And Chris Evans wasn't remember. great in it either. Uh, had a uh, Hugh Laurie in it too, <laughs> um, and uh, Forrest Whitaker. Uh, okay. It, it, some street kings maybe oh okay sure yeah yeah i i, I didn't and chris evans was okay in that mm. uh i've grown to love him as an actor and i kind of wish oh, yeah. i would have seen this during that time because i would have had a lot more respect i did i i did i saw this when it came out in 2007 right and uh just like when he was i think at that point he was announced for it uh because uh yeah because because it was 2011 when captain america came out but like when he was announced for it um, like I, everyone was kind of hesitant about it uh, or like they weren't really sold on I'm like, right. oh, how can the human torch be Captain America and all that? And I was like, he's, he's great. He's, he's yeah. great guys. He's going to do. And great. I wish I would have had that background because mm-hmm. I, I, like I said, there was, there wasn't a performance in that movie that was bad. Right. Um, oh yeah. Everyone did a great job. And I love how each character gets, gets their moment. Yeah. Like, each one gets, gets their, their own moment. little arc. In one of the hands down, one of the best scores I've ever heard in a, in a film. Yeah. Um, yeah. I absolutely loved it. Um, but yeah, anyway, so, um, <laughs> my potpourri, <laughs> we can wrap this up pretty quickly cause I gotta run and catch this movie right? and you need to run and catch bad guys. Huh. Uh, huh. Yeah. Run and catch food first. Oh yeah. Well, <laughs> so my potpourri is today I went and saw sisters. Um, and how empty was that? It, it was actually pretty, pretty, pretty happening. Was it? Um, yeah, there was, there was a, there was a fair amount of people in the theater for it. Fair enough. Um, but I mean, the lines for Star Wars were just backed up. It, <laughs> so it was crazy. insane. Um, but a couple things about Sisters. One, I'll just briefly. I, uh, by the way, if you're on Letterboxd, follow me. I'm uh, obsessive viewer on it. It's letterboxd.com slash obsessive viewer. Need to get on that. You, I think you'll freaking love it. I just haven't been busy. I yeah. need to, I, you know what? I'll, I'll probably end up doing it tomorrow. I took the night nice. off, so I'll probably end nice. up doing it tomorrow. Yeah, awesome. Do that. Yeah. Definitely. Um, I command it. No, <laughs> but anyway, um, <laughs> uh, I'm a taxpayer. I pay your salary, so you you, know. you don't live in my area. You do well, not pay my salary. I have for anyway. I could go on twenty minutes of why what your statement said was untrue, but go on. Anyway, my family pays your salary. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah. So so sisters was you know it was not good. Um, oh really? It really wasn't. It was basically. Have you ever been in a situation and watch watch how you respond to this, <laughs> uh, where where you're around someone who is doing the best they can to be funny. And to like perform in a funny way for you, whether it's in a conversation or something. Mm, um, yeah. 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 And they, and they're not quite doing it. And there's a part of it that like you, you, it's so bad that they quite, that you question whether they really believe they're being funny or if there are, if there's something wrong with them. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah. Stop staring at me. No, no, no. <laughs> no but this was kind of like, 
two hours of that. Really? Yeah, it was very awkward. It was like, uh, first of all, none of the characters were that well defined. The, the two central characters were their sisters. They're both they're both different. Uh, one's just a com- a complete train wreck. The other is very. Uh, um, uh, I don't even know how to characterize her. She she is uh, very helpful of people, or she's very um, empathetic. Maybe. Empathetic. She's and she never had like a crazy like rage out right. um, childhood or teen years or anything like that. Um, and you know, I love Tina Fey. I really do, and I respect the hell out of her. I think she's a genius. But I did not buy her in that role for a second. That is a hard con- role for her. Yeah, um, given her background. Yeah, and and it's, I don't know. She's just it, it just fell flat on on multiple multiple levels. Uh, 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 I think it's Bobby Moynihan. He plays a character who is much like my. He's representative of the entire movie. He is a character who is who they characterize him as being always on. So he's always trying to get a laugh from people, and it's set up to where he's just really uh, annoying and uh, not funny. Is that um, the uh, male interest for Amy Poehler? No, no, no. no. Um, he's just kind of a side character, but he's it's 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 set up like that and then something happens to him in which it should become like he should become just absolutely hilarious and hysterical but he doesn't it's just like the same thing it's it's i'm being vague but it's it's a really just not a good movie it didn't do anything for me that's disappointing because yeah. that was one that me and the wife are probably going to try mm-hmm. to see because I, I thought it looked funny um yeah me and too. i like both tina pay and amy Tina Fey and Amy Poehler. Me too, and that's kind of one of the one of the bummers about it is that I I thought that you know this would be a good this could be good it could be it could be fun right. uh, and like I I went in kind of expecting like Neighbors from last year because Neighbors was a uh, was a surprise comedy for me. Nah, let me down. Okay, fair enough. Um, I loved it. It was it was I cracked up multiple times. Well, in the lucky theater. for you, they're making um, a sequel. Yes. Um, <laughs> But with this movie, it was just like the jokes that did land with the jokes that did land, um, which were like few and far between. Like it just got all it got was like a sensible chuckle out of me. What about Um, the rest of the audience? How were they responding? uh, uh, Probably like 40 percent kind of kind of loved it. Yeah, Um, they weren't like cracking up consistently, but like they there were points in the movie where it was like. They were like a laugh track. <laughs> That's how it felt to me. Like they they were cracking up, but it wasn't like they were, it wasn't like they were get, hooping and hollering for it or right. anything. It was just like they were laughing while things were going on. Um, and now I'm describing what an audience does. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so so you know, Sisters was I would say red box it. Yeah. Um, well, maybe I'll probably still be forced to watch it. Yeah. In the theater, but the. Good thing about it, and I was gonna probably I'll probably bring this up again um, in a future episode, maybe I don't know, but uh, I got Movie Pass. I saw that you yes. got that. Yeah, uh, man, I love it. Thirty five dollars a month, right? Thirty five dollars a month. What I did was um, bought a year of Movie Pass, um, which isn't bad because it's a movie every twenty four hours. Basically, they give you a card. This is how Movie Pass works. Um, you sign up. And for thirty thirty five 35 and thirty five dollars a month in our area, but other areas it could be like as low as thirty dollars a month. But um, you sign up, and then they send you a card, like a like a debit card, like it's a Mastercard debit card with right. your name printed on it and numbers and all that. Um, and what you do is basically when you have it, you activate it on the MoviePass app, all available on iOS and Android, and then you go you go to the theater, uh, you open the app, you check in to what. Um, what screening you want to go to. You have to be within uh, 100 feet of the theater in order to check in. Um, once you check in, you just go in to like one of the kiosks or whatever, and uh, or I assume to the cashier and everything. Um, basically, you click uh, which movie you just uh, checked into, and then you use the card like a debit card to buy the ticket, and you're free to go. Yeah. What are the theater restrictions or are there? Um, and, well... They have you can look up what theaters are in are, are available to it in your area um, uh, on the site, but in our theater it's like or in our area it's pretty much all the main ones I go to. Keystone, are not Keystone Art though, Keystone. Um, which is a bummer. But right. and no 3D know. or IMAX, no 3D or IMAX. But other than that, there's no restrictions to what you can see. Like it's not like like I could go use it to see Star Wars tomorrow if there's if that's not sold out. Available. Yeah, but like it's not like you have to wait a week or something. Right. Um, so yeah, so I'm looking forward to 
using that more. Um, and I'm going to, I'm actually, I'm actually excited about it because I'm going to put all my ticket stubs in a Ziploc bag. And then at the end of next year, I'm going to tally up how much money. See if it was worth the yeah, price. Which, I mean. With you, it's going to be. No, it's going to be. Absolutely. Well, I mean, hell, hell with me, it'd, it'd be worth it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, if only we could use it twice so I could get the wife in. I, I would wonder if they would do that. Something, like Even if it's like 45 bucks a month. Yeah. And you can get two tickets at once. Um, that would be, that would be great. That would be good. Yeah. Um, I will say, and this will be the parting thought cause I do need to catch this movie. Um, <laughs> is that, uh, I'm an idiot and I didn't know how it worked. So I went and I checked in and stuff and basically uh, what it does is like, I'm so used to going on Fandango and like ordering, ordering through that. Um, <laughs> Also cheating them a little bit because I buy children's tickets. <laughs> so <laughs> I always wondered if that would yeah. work. Oh yeah, because they don't. Uh, you know, <sighs> kids, high school kids taking uh, taking you know taking your tickets. They're not going to care. That's uh, and like, and I have like prepped because I'm I'm a very very uh, law abiding person. <laughs> so like, I feel like I'm ripping them off, even though it's a major theater chain. But like, I have it prepped in my head. Like when that happens, it's like, oh, you know, if they call me out on it or whatever, be like, oh yeah, I'm sorry, I just accidentally clicked that. But anyway, so I'm so used to. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I'm getting off track. So with uh, uh, with Fandango, I you know I'm so used to going to the kiosk and just swiping my card and then it just printing it out. So what happened with Movie Pass today was I went and then I just assumed that it's a pre order ticket, so I just assumed that you click pre order tickets and then swipe it and you're ready to go. But it didn't work, and I kind of had a minor freak out. I was 30 minutes early, so I had time to figure right. it out. So w- the great thing about Movie Pass is that I called their customer service line. <laughs> And like they have like you can contact customer support through email or you can call their number if you need assistance right away. And like I was immediately connected to a human uh, and they talked me through it and uh, I I went through it and uh, he he corrected how I did and uh, easy, easy as pie. Nice. Or whatever. Um, I've never used that expression before. <laughs> yeah. I never quite um, understood it. I've baked a pie. Me neither. It's not the easiest. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like warm apple pie. <laughs> um, anyway. Uh, so yeah, Movie Pass. I endorse it. Also, you can apparently get uh, ten dollars um, credited or whatever if you refer someone. So if you uh, do uh, are interested in it, I will let me know and I'll send you the invite email and then they'll credit me to it. So good deal. Yeah, um, not that I need it. I have a year of it, but <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah. So uh, yeah, well, uh, that about does it for us. Thanks again, Fekas, for Thanks coming. Thanks for having me. I yeah. always enjoy it. Yes. I yes. miss I miss having Tiny here, but Yeah, yeah, you know. It's uh sometimes I want to punch him in his perfect teeth. <laughs> um, not really, not really. I love Tiny. Um I just wanted to make that it probably wouldn't work out well for you. Not Tiny. so much at all. Um, <laughs> I will yeah. say this, it was it was nice to hear Mike back on the podcast last two episodes. It it was, it was even nice. if he hates me for <laughs> my <laughs> right. um Words, but no, uh, yeah, and I hope that we we hope to have him back full time in the near future next summer ish, but yeah, so so yeah, I'm glad that he'll I'm I'm I he'll and he'll like hearing that I guess I don't know I don't know um, <laughs> if, he, if he listens yeah if, if I don't you know. listen Mike I don't think he does <laughs> I don't think he has time to listen but anyway uh so yeah so uh yeah i'll just throw it to the pre-record outros and we'll be done now so we don't really have a sign off but uh yeah thanks again fecus no problem thank you yep and uh we'll see you guys next week bye actually later this week for the force awakens they get it yeah yep okay yeah (laughs) thanks guys smear pizza pizza roll so you know his name yet do you think? Yeah. Yeah, she she responds to it. And I, like, I kind of keep thinking, like, because it's that. Okay. Because um, I, I don't. I don't know. Like, uh, like I'm fine with the name Pizza Roll. I, I like it. But it's like, I feel like it's not. That's not the name I gave her. Oh, you didn't give her that no, name? No, okay. because that's, that's just what they named her there. You could have changed it. Our dog came as Chip, and we changed it to Neville. I could have changed it. And you can still. I mean, I he, he still she's, can. She's not going to care. Well, she does have she does have a uh, uh, um, what's the word I'm looking for? A uh, an Instagram page, so, <laughs> right, so she's right. locked in for that. Uh-huh. Thank you for listening to the Obsessive Viewer, presented by ObsessiveViewer.com. You can find more of our episodes at ovpodcast.com, and you can subscribe to the show on iTunes, Stitcher, or your preferred podcast app. 
The Obsessive Viewer's theme song is An Eclipse of Events and is provided by Loud Like from their EP Mistakes We Must Make. You can find that and more great music from them on iTunes and like their Facebook page at facebook.com slash loudlikemusic. Any and all feedback on the podcast is encouraged. You can email the hosts individually at matt, tiny, or mike at obsessiveviewer.com or send an email to the podcast in general at podcast at obsessiveviewer.com. Check out the Obsessive Viewer blog at obsessiveviewer.com where we post movie and TV reviews and the occasional editorial about the business of entertainment. You can also like us on Facebook at facebook.com slash the Obsessive Viewer and follow us on Twitter at Obsessive Viewer, at Obsessive Tiny, and at I am Mike White. If you want more obsessive content in your life, check out our sister site, obsessivebooknerd.com, for book reviews, author spotlights, and a general celebration of reading. Finally, if you're philosophically curious, check out Tiny's side project podcast, The Secular Perspective, which explores the concepts of faith, religion, and existence from the perspective of secular hosts. You can find that at thesecularperspective.com and subscribe to the podcast on the podcatcher of your choice. Again, thank you so much for listening. We love you. Be excellent to each other. Sorry, Tommy. You know I wouldn't do this if I had any other choice. But he's my friend. So was I.